My brother-in-law died suddenly, and now my sister and her kids have to sell their home. That's why I told my husband we could not put off getting life insurance any longer. An agent offered us a 10-year, $500,000 policy for nearly $50 a month. Then we called SelectQuote. SelectQuote found us identical coverage for only $19 a month, a savings of $369 a year. Whether you need a $500,000 policy or a $5 million policy, Select Quote could save you more than 50% on term life insurance. For your free quote, go to SelectQuote.com. SelectQuote.com. That's SelectQuote.com. Select Quote. We shop, you save. Full details on example policies at SelectQuote.com slash commercials. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Welcome to Pretty Lies and Alibis. Join us as we seek the truth and travel the long road to justice. What's going on, everybody? It's Sunday. Time for another episode of Pretty Lies and Alibis. I'm Gigi. What's good, Fruit Loop? Not the air conditioning. Oh, my gosh. I'm so hot. Yeah, it's a little warm in here. It's very warm in here. I'm already sweating. Yeah, I may combust. Well, I think maybe one of my kids bumped it, you know, because I keep it cold in here. It's not cold in here. Well, we know it's not Mason because he keeps it like on 55. 60 degrees this morning when I woke up. Yeah, he always turns it down. Oh my gosh. Anyway, so real quick, we just want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Two Cool T-Shirt Quilts. If you have a bunch of T-shirts laying around like we do, uh, go to twocoolt-shirtquilts.com slash pretty lies and alibis and they do memorial blankets and pillows and all kinds of stuff. So give them a give them a look. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yes. If you have ordered stickers in the last two weeks and have used our code word Sherlock, uh, we haven't forgotten about you. We are getting our new cards in this week, so they should be going out midweek. Just wanted to let you know we haven't forgot. Yep. So uh, what about YouTube Live? Uh, So a lot of you didn't realize there was a second part. Uh, when we filmed the first one, it only let us film so much. So then we went and did a second part as well. So go under the live tab and you can see part two. Yeah, a lot of people did not know that. So uh, go check it out. Yep. So you were collecting uh, flying insects in your Jeep. Oh my God. I about died of death the other day going down uh, one of our big interstates here. And so I'm just jamming along with some Janice Joplin and I feel something on my earlobe and it's a wasp. <laughs> okay. So can I just say, uh, I don't know how many lanes I crossed. Uh, thank goodness nobody was near me. Uh, one person came up beside me and literally just gave me like a wide eye. Like, she's crazy. She lost it. Now you probably thought it was you are driving under the influence. I mean, I'm sure that's how it looked from behind, but I was just trying not to get stung going down the road. And finally, it went out the door. But, you know, at first I rolled down the window. It goes in the way back and it, it's out of my sight. So I'm waiting on it to sting me in the head or something. It was just a disaster. Thank gosh I didn't die of death. Yeah, I yeah, my funny wasp story, I sprayed it with a pressure washer and it shot down my shirt. Um, oh, no. I'm allergic, so I was on Benadryl for the next two days. So, oh, God. Yeah, yeah, you are allergic. Yeah. Uh-uh. Okay, so let me tell you something. The other night I'm laying there and I'm, well, I'm, I'm asleep. Okay, it's like three in the morning. I'm having a dream that I'm in major respiratory distress and I can't breathe in my dream. So I kind of force myself to wake up and Sherlock's on my chest. So it hits me. This cat's getting fat. He's getting big. You know, so I'm trying to figure out how because he eats a normal amount here at home. And then my neighbor behind me sends me a message, a picture of Sherlock eating out of the cat bowl in their house. He lets himself in through the dog door and just kind of takes up residence over there when he shoots out and I can't grab him. And so he's been double dipping in the food. So he goes over there and she'll text me now when he leaves and say he's coming home. And as sure as I get that text, here he comes in my dog door and goes right to the food. He's probably hitting up three or four other houses, too. He has, he's quite round in the middle now. And I, I mean, it was heavy on my chest. I don't know what to do. I'm going to have to put him on a diet. Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that like an old thing? Like cats can suck the wind out of babies or something? Oh, yeah. That was a movie. Uh, Drew Barrymore or something. Yeah, maybe. You better watch out. 
Well, I, okay, so I put the food up the other day when I got the text that he had eaten and he was coming home and he attacked me when he saw his food wasn't down <laughs> and was just following me around meowing. So I don't know what to do. Yeah. He's just going to be huge. Yep. So Lori's going to finish up her 90 days on September 24th. Yeah. So if you kind of do the, which I I used a calculator, uh, the 90 days from when she was admitted goes to September 24th. I'll be curious to see if she stays for another, what, 180 days at, I think it's 90 and then 180. I thought it was just 90 again. Oh, maybe it's 90 again. Uh, But anyway, so I just thought we've still got a couple of months of her in care. If it goes the way they said. Oh, yeah. So we had a big document dump or, well, Nate Eaton and Justin Lum and Kim Powell from uh, Arizona. I think it's like Fox 10. They all filed a Freedom of Information Act with uh, Chandler PD to get these documents that have been kind of the subject of their investigation for the Charles Vallow murder and beyond. I mean, once you start seeing this stuff, it's not just confined to that. So, number one, I see why it took so long to get some charges, because in the little bit that they've trickled out since this has come, it's crazy, the, the, the details that are in there. Yeah, it's a lot of information. It's a lot. Um, so, what we're going to do this week is we are likely going to get these documents as well, and uh, we're going to start pouring them out um, on the podcast and on social media. Um I can't wait for the stuff to trickle out. <laughs> yeah, it's it's some eye-opening stuff. It is. And I think that, too, there's no way everybody can put everything out there unless they, they do a document dump. And I don't want to miss anything. Yeah. So I just kind of want to, for us to be able to look through these ourselves and see what's, you know, what's interesting and worth talking about. So we're hoping that maybe by Tuesday or so we should have those documents. Wow. Big, big deal. So let's... Um, let's how many pieces were there? So there are over 2,500 pieces of evidence uh, released uh, in its pictures, texts, emails. And this is recovered from Lori's account. Yeah. <coughs> oh, excuse Sorry me. about that. Yeah, we're all struggling with a little bit of a upper respiratory sore throat thing. Oh, something. Yeah. It stinks, yeah. Um, so a lot of this stuff was redacted, but in the stuff that wasn't redacted, it a lot was revealed. Yeah, I think the uh, one of the first things for me was JJ in his uh, red pajamas. Yeah, because that picture was taken September 22nd uh, at 1046 a.m. And we know that is the last day that child was alive. Yeah. Um, and if you remember the detective on, I think it's Hermosillo, when he was testifying and he talked about when they found his body, he was in the red pajamas. So it's very eerie to see that picture knowing what we know, but... At the same time, I was kind of looking at it, and I know it's really, really hard for the families to see this kind of stuff, um, but to me, J.J. in that picture, I mean, he was oblivious, bless his heart. I, I think internally there was a lot going on with him. At least he looked like he was kind of in his own little world, and... Yeah, he was playing with some uh, cups or something, yeah. it looked like, and yeah. But it's very haunting. It's just, you know, you see pictures like that, and we we get so caught up in other details of the case, and then you see this, and you look at it, and you think, in less than 24 hours, that poor boy is going to be gone. Yeah. And then it just kind of renews the horror of this whole case, and yeah. the evilness, and just... The disregard for life. Yeah. And I think I would have to uh, uh, think that all this has been tough on Kay and Larry and uh, everyone, that whole family. Yeah. And everybody involved. Yeah, it has. And uh, Kay has commented on some stuff about this. She was wondering, there's a picture of JJ uh, on a ride at a place called Bear World, which is maybe like five minutes from Rexburg. It's not far. It's part of Yellowstone, I believe. Um, and, and it, the picture made me so sad. Um, he was just alone on this ride in the picture, but you know, I thought physically he looks alone and just in a poetic sense at that point, Tylee had been dead. Um, and, and for this picture was taken on September 14th. So Tylee had been dead about five days. Well, Kay was asking Justin Lum on Facebook if he knew the date. And I caught an email that was on a news um, report and it was kind of flashed across the screen it was really blurry but it does say that that picture at bear world was taken on september the 14th she was just curious in the grand scheme of time uh, to see where, to see when yeah. this was taken so it, his face he just looks like he's looking off in the distance and not excited like a kid would be to be on a ride especially by yourself that's kind of cool 
Yeah. Um, but we, we've talked about how children with autism um, thrive on routine and continuity in sure. their life. And so at this point, he hasn't seen his daddy because his daddy's been murdered. He hasn't seen his sister because his sister's been murdered. He's in a new town, new school, new everything. Yeah, and we know Lori wasn't focused on him, so... Gosh, no. I no. think she was just, you know, keeping him fed at that point. Um, yep. Now, what else did we find out that is on that day? So, in an email, uh, an investigator's talking about the last pick of Tylee at Yellowstone. Uh, that's where we were, right? No. Um, oh, there's also... <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, there's also 40 seconds of video of uh, that shows... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. JJ, Lori, and Alex in Bear World on the same day. And um, so it's just, you know, things like that have not been released yet, which is kind of why we're just going to fork over the money and get this stuff. Yeah. So that we can just see it and whatever is interesting, we're going to put it right out there. Yep. So now I'm right. So in an email, an investigator is talking about the last pick of Tylee at Yellowstone. He says he isn't sure she made it back from that trip. That was the subject of much discussion in the early days. Yeah, if you remember... It was, yeah, there were searches and everything. Yeah, we and and just on the Facebook groups, we all went back and forth saying, there's no way she made it back from Yellowstone. She's in a hot spring. And then we kind of know at this point she did make it back. Yeah. Um, because they stopped and had barbecue and everything. I just don't see that they killed her in Yellowstone um, to be driving around, you know, a little bit of a long distance. I think it's maybe a little over an hour from Rexburg to where they went in. Yeah. So it just seems like she was killed that night. But so it was just interesting to read in the early days. They were sort of mimicking what we were all speculating online. Oh, yeah. There was also a photo of Alex taking pictures at Mesa Falls. You don't know how bad I sat there and just closed my eyes and imagined kicking him over that railing. <laughs> looking at that picture. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. It's so hard to see him knowing at that point he had killed Tylee. Mm-hmm. Ah, just crazy. Sorry, I just got me a big drink of water. No, it's okay. It's I've lost three pounds in water weight since we started this. It's it, humid here. It's like you can cut the humidity with a knife. It's bad. I, I, it's I like mean, on the cartoons. Yeah. When they cut the clouds and stuff <laughs> with a knife. That's. It's bad. I mean, this this is the two shower a day times in South Carolina. Yeah, and I need a haircut so my hair is longer. So it's like frizzy, and I'm like, what in the world? <laughs> Yep. Okay, so according to Justin Long, um, <laughs> iCloud records show time stamps of photos in Hawaii on 1023 of 2019. Mm -hmm. A California residence in at La Miranda Buena Park there on you go. 1128 um, of 2019 to December 1st of 2019. That's close to Knott's Berry Farm where Chad spent Thanksgiving with his kids. Uh-oh. Yeah. So if you remember, they met out there for Thanksgiving. Yeah. And then they flew from L.A. to uh, Kauai on December the 1st. So somebody online had said, you know, I bet he never took Tammy to such a nice hotel. And I was like, that's like a step above a Motel 6. <laughs> yeah. Let's not give him too much credit. Yeah. I'm not, no, no disrespect, but it, it was not a five star. But a lot of people online thought it was this really nice hotel. It's not. <laughs> uh, so Chad and Lori in Hawaii at the temple on eleven twelve of 2019. I thought this next part was interesting that Alex Cox booked a trip from Phoenix to Columbia, South America from July 14th to July the 19th. And if you remember, Charles was murdered on July the 11th. Yeah. So it kind of makes sense that did he go down there in case things got hairy and suspicions were raised that he would be out of the country. It, just screams that to me but then we also know that alex was known to get prostitutes i mean we just put that out there yeah i remember he went on that dating thing too yeah we found some questionable sites of his on try um what what is that website we found it on um some, yeah, some list everything you've some, signed up for some, that email. some fetish pages that he was a member of crazy weird. yeah yeah so there's a couple of pictures of ammunition on a shelf from a store and that was dated september 23rd 2019 and that's the day that jj uh was murdered now here's my question because it doesn't i mean we don't know a cause of death for either him or tylee um it doesn't seem like during this this testimony that the investigators did that they talked about a gunshot it was more focusing on the duct tape i kind of wonder did they have plans to kill other people could be we know brandon was on their list but why are you buying ammo um on the day where jj's dead it just seems to me like 
maybe they were needing it for something else. That's the scary part. I think at this point, though, once Kay started putting the heat on about wanting to see and talk to JJ, um, Kay said it best, they scatter like cockroaches in the light when oh, things yeah. are going down. Rats leaving the sinking ship. Yeah, Kay's all over it. She cracks yeah. me up. She oh, just yeah. says it like it is. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Is there going to be a hit list? Maybe. Or is there going to be others? I think the dark and light list might be as close to a hit list as we see. Because if you look at that dark and light list and count the number of people that were dark that are deceased or murdered. I hate to say dead because they were murdered. Yeah. Um, How many other dark uh, people were there on there? Yeah, that's true. That's kind of my, my opinion is everybody Chad didn't like and everybody Lori had a problem with. But if you remember, JJ was light. He was light. Yeah. Uh, but then you had this whole thing where she tells Melanie Gibb he's a zombie. Yeah. So it could be that this, he, in their mind, turned after this list was put out. I'd be yeah. curious to see if there's any updates to the light dark list uh, when all these documents come out. Yeah. Because there's, there's stuff they're not putting out that would probably answer a ton of questions. And I think some of those bullets were 45. Fives, I think, for a 45 millimeter gun. Or they were 556. Um, and I know that from my Fallout 76 game. Uh, That's the only reason I know about ammo. <laughs> I just remember that one video of Alex with uh, his brother and mm-hmm. they're shooting in that shooting range. And he has a very, that gun he had, I want to say it was a 45. But the, remember the bullets were huge. Oh, yeah. Like they yeah. were special. Yeah. But I, there may have been 45s on the shelf. I do remember seeing the 556. Yeah, it was a couple of different yeah. ones. Yeah. But why, you know, I don't see Lori taking pictures of ammo for fun. So it seems to me like, hey, is this what you need? Yeah, because we've never seen a video of her shooting anything. No. I and mean, I think mean, about it. Well, you know, Kresha said something really profound on our live Charles Manson didn't kill anybody but he ordered all of his followers to do the killings it's it and that's a really good analogy yeah you don't have to get your hands physically dirty to be a murderer no I mean look at all the mob bosses around oh yeah come on exactly um okay so there's a few pics of Chad and Lori in Hawaii taken from a hidden surveillance camera yeah um Lori had a black jacket and hat on it almost looks like she was trying to disguise herself it did and and it's funny because um if you remember right there after Tammy was murdered Chad got that new haircut um he dropped all this weight and you see it on that and then now you see him and he's just kind of He's let himself go yeah, since he, he got that put in the pokey. Young college age haircut, and he was wearing you know blue jeans that you see twenty one year olds twenty one year olds wearing. Jeans on. <laughs> yeah, he ditched the flannels and the and the plaid and oh. tossed out his white New Balance, <laughs> his grilling yeah. shoes. Yeah, the beeve kind of yeah. got a makeover. <laughs> yeah, little uh, Caddyshack. Uh, <laughs> he uh, Bill Murray. Right. Um, yep. So, um, in an email from May of last year, twenty twenty. The Chandler police said that Lori was using Google to look at U.S. maps, and she was trying to find the driving distance from Rexburg, Idaho, to Independence, Missouri, and she was also looking for flights at that time. Now, here's what's profound about that. Is it, I forget, Joseph Smith found yes. it? Okay, I'm sorry. Um, back in the 1800s, when he was, from what I understand, when he was um, creating this religion or or telling what he had been told to i don't know how it works i'm just i'm sorry i'm not up on my religions y'all and y'all know all you who inbox us we love you and yes. we just didn't get around the inbox you and asking you this question yeah it's been crazy busy um but he said that the lord would return to independence missouri yeah. so it kind of fits along with that uh second return to christ it's just th- this religious doctrine that they made up and believed uh it's yeah. crazy yeah and we know it's in totally uh not in line with uh anything uh the mormon church uh oh no believed way um, out in left way field. out in left field yeah. um so october 7th 2019 at ten twenty one a.m alex texted her and asked where she was and she responded jj school will be home in a few minutes uh, the messages were deleted but recovered by investigators. Okay, two points. Number one, at this point, J.J. was was murdered. He was dead. She's at his school, I guess maybe withdrawing him. Um, and then here's the thing. When a lot of these text messages were deleted just from what was released that we've seen, and a lot of it was redacted, 
when you delete stuff, you're hiding stuff you know is wrong. Oh, yeah. So don't tell me she didn't know what she was doing. Yeah, come on out the the psychiatric ward, Lori. You got to own it. I, I mean, mean you, that's what we've said from the get go. If you're crazy, you're not going to try to hide it. No, you flaunt it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's uh no. I mean, there was a lot of stuff that was deleted and recovered. There was also some text messages to unknown names and devices. Kind of wonder if those aren't burner phones. Could be. Uh, but it was redacted, so we don't know the content of that. But there was a lot of unknown. Yeah, and it was a lot of deleted, but we recovered. Deleted, right. Yeah. So, oh, man. So, Lori booked a flight from Idaho to Phoenix Mesa on 10-8-2019, which we know was one day before the shot was fired at Tammy in the driveway. Yep. Um, she booked her return flight to Idaho the day after Tammy's murder, which was on 10-19. Uh, She booked the flight under the name Lori Ryan. See, that's crazy because she was a valo at that point. And so she must have had some kind of a legal document with her former married name on it to be able to do that. They don't let you just throw in an old name on your your ticket. Yeah, unless she just had an old driver's license. Yeah, marriage license, driver's license, anything like that. But Kay, again, on Facebook said something that, Isn't it funny that her and Chad were always very far apart? Not always, but I mean, there were times where when these things were going down, they were across the country from each other, which to me, yeah. And it kind of, to me, is sort of looking ahead to, well, we weren't even together. How could we have both done this? Um, So you start to see that that conniving sort of... um, Again, you know what you're doing. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, so on, uh, and this is the other thing. She hated Joe Ryan. Yeah. Hated him. Right. So, and now she's using his last name when it's convenient where she maybe doesn't want to be flying under the name Valo. Yeah. And I, I mean, she would have had to have a, a license with that name because you have to show a picture ID. Okay. So, uh, I have an old license of mine and I didn't know it until one time my mom and I were being very nosy. There was a big police presence near our house. And we got in the car and I forgot my wallet at home and it was a, it was a checkpoint. Ooh. So he says license and registration. I said, Oh my gosh, I left it at home. Wait, I have another one. And he's like, ma'am, you know, it's illegal to have two licenses. And I was like, I should have never left my house. <laughs> so yeah, you, cause you're supposed to turn them in. You're supposed to turn them in because then people get fake IDs or, you know, whatever, yeah. uh, buy plane tickets under a name. You're not supposed to that sort of stuff. Yeah. So on 10, eight, Lori texts someone named Audrey and also Melanie Pulowski. Um, Audrey was a witness in one of the court hearings and was a Facebook friend of Jason Mao and Melanie Gibb. Yeah. And now here's the thing. Um, it doesn't say in what capacity, obviously, that she testified, but that's kind of, I, I went through the witness list again to see an Audrey. That's the only Audrey that I saw. So I th- I'm thinking at some point she was called to testify in the, uh, preliminary gotcha, hearing. Gotcha. Gotcha. So 10-9-2019, there's pictures and a video of a child on the splash pad. It says it was obvious that Lori was staying with Melanie at this time. Melanie Pulaski, by the way. Yeah. So I think, obviously, that was a picture um, because um, at this point, Tylee and JJ both have been murdered. So, it they you know, without saying it, it seemed like it was one of Melanie's kids that was in that picture. Yeah. I can't, I can't, how does she sit there and watch a child play, um, knowing what she did to her? Or, did to her kids yeah i just don't get she's oh, they're sick, sick. Yeah. yeah there we go yeah for real um they confirmed that Lori flew from idaho to arizona during this time and they theorized she brought jj's ipad with her um investigators were interested to see if the ipad connected to missouri between october 10th and 12th of 2019 yep and then um so on august 14th 2019 Lori was taking screenshots from a computer and she had bought two wedding bands that had green in them like the Malachite. But whoever she she bought it from had canceled the order because uh, they were a student and got busy with school and just couldn't fulfill the order. Um, at one point, they talk about issuing a subpoena to Etsy to get the billing information and kind of any details about the purchase. Now, we know they eventually went on, what, Amazon to buy them. Yep. But so initially, she, um, in August... To, which is before, um, right after Charles was dead, just a little over a month, but before the kids were dead. Yeah. So when That's did they crazy. move? To, they, they moved to Idaho. Was it September? It was no. the end. Because Tylee was, was only there a week. Yeah. 
Yeah. So it was, it was the end, latter part of October, like right at the beginning of September. Yeah. Um. You mean August and September? I mean, uh, yeah. Whatever. There we go. Is. Sorry, it's hot. Our it brains is. are boiling in our heads right I'm now. Bad, I'm bad. <laughs> uh, um, so, so, yeah. In an email sent on January 30th, 2020, um, from Detective Nathan Duncan to Carrie Cooper with the FBI, he says that Lori seems careful to not text people, but to ask them to call her. He says the photos of ammunition are a significance in relation to the missing kids. Uh, and that's when everybody was theorizing at that point. Yeah. Um, because obviously we didn't know where the kids were. January of last year and um, so it's just interesting and I'm sure you know you see that picture on the day JJ goes missing or the last time he's seen alive and it's ammunition so yeah I mean after seeing this stuff you see they have this is a snippet of all the discovery between all these different agencies and it's just a massive case oh yeah it's, it, this is literally just another confirmation that uh Number one, we ain't seen nothing yet. Oh, no. Uh, As hard as the pictures were to see and, you know, you just wish you could jump through the screen and hop in that real time and just scoop them up and run away with them. But the last one of the last things that we're going to talk about are these texts between Lori and Kay, which Kay actually uh, messaged her. It's not clear when these were sent, but I'm assuming it's before Charles's memorial because part of the discussion is about getting JJ there. Yeah. So yep. I'm going to let you, why don't you read Kay's part and I'll read Lori's part. Okay. Um, so Kay says, Lo, are y'all, are y'all okay? I'm worried. Please just send quick text that y'all are okay. Did you see flight itineraries? Are you, are you good with it? Love you. Kisses for JJ from me and Papa and this little kissy face and hearts. So she sent that text at 11.10 p.m. Lori did not respond until 1.25 p.m. the next day. And she says, sorry, yes, we're okay. Been busy. I never received any email from you. We've been figuring out what to do. JJ won't be able to go to Louisiana next week. We are moving to Hawaii ASAP before school starts there. Please send me the address that you want me to send the ashes to for your memorial. I'll also send a box of things for Cole and Zach if you could give it to them. That would be great. Thanks. How inconsiderate and rude. Uh, yeah. Oh, like, and, Kay's just trying to, she's she's checking on JJ. Right. She's obviously wanting him uh, there. You it's know? his father. And, yeah. and, and the thing is, if you remember, Lori made a big deal to say that Kay was after them and all this. And you read these and... As we assumed, Kay is being extremely reasonable. And um, I think given the circumstances, knowing that Lori's brother murdered her her brother, she's being extra nice. Oh, yeah. She could have just laid into her, but she's being civil because that's what's best for JJ. And that's how adults do it. Yeah. So Kay responds and says, is there any way possible I can get him? I can be there tomorrow since he's out of school. Once you're settled in Hawaii, I will bring him to you there. It breaks my heart. He won't be able to attend the service. Us keeping him while you move will help you. A win-win situation. Um, I had... Hold on, I gotta get out. Yeah, it kind of breaks apart and repeats. Um, I had rethought flight plans after I booked. Uh, Since you said he is out of school from tomorrow until August the 5th, I wanted to change and get him tomorrow anyway. But you didn't reply to my text. Please let me know. However, we can work this out. We will bend over backwards to work around your schedule. I need JJ hugs and very, and it's got kiss emojis very badly right now. Everyone is looking forward to seeing him. Please low and a bunch of prayer hands. Yeah. What does Lori respond? So Lori says, once we are settled there, you are welcome to come visit him. It is just too confusing for him right now. He won't know what's going on at the memorial. It's better this way. Send me the address and I'll have him FaceTime you tonight. Yeah. So Kay's being very, um, gosh, I mean, she's being nicer than I ever would have in, in this situation. I just, my gosh, these people have been through it all. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just lost my page. So uh, let me, <laughs> let me try to find. Well, then the next thing comes up is Kay emailing Detective Moffat. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, I'm pulling and back up. She says, Hi, Nathan. We're seriously worried about JJ's safety and well being. Is it possible for you to check his school on Monday to see if he's there? 
been there and he's okay. Uh, if he's out of his routine, he will be combative, uncooperative, etc. His teachers will know how home life he is by his actions. Lori hasn't responded to text or calls since the text she sent about kids getting nothing and I got all the insurance money. We're extremely worried. We can't lose him too. Um, please, please, please help us. Uh, we're heartbroken. We cannot lose him too. If Lori was sane, I wouldn't be worried. She's not. She stated she didn't want him anymore in January. Now she doesn't have the $1 million. She really won't want him now other than a measly social security check for her at $1,900 and JJ $1,900. She's screwed unless she has a new boyfriend with deep pockets. Who knows? Please help us. Uh, Kay was on it from oh, love the her. beginning. This is yeah. August 9th, 2019. Now, um, it's really hard to look at this stuff and see this is, you know, unfortunately, after Charles has been murdered, but before the kids and Tammy are murdered. We don't care about Alex dying. Sorry. Yeah. Um, it's just, and I know that their hands were, that, that I'm sure that this detective would have loved to have had things go differently. But, August the 9th, if you look at everything Charles pleaded with the police on these on these body cams, these kind of emails, it's it's just sad to see what transpired Yeah, because of what Chandler didn't do. Yeah. And we know Lori would have played the game. Oh, yeah. I mean, you hear in the recording when they do go out and talk with her, she's the old high-pitched chipper. I don't know why. They, yeah. You know, they hate They me, want my life insurance money. My brother's going to kill me. Exactly. Uh, it's just ridiculous. And I, and I know she was very manipulative and pulled the wool over a lot of people's eyes in law enforcement. But yeah, in hindsight, August 2019, we had two kids that were alive and healthy physically, maybe not emotionally with all her craziness. And we had Tammy Daybell alive. It, it's yeah. just a reminder that this was a train wreck. Yeah. Uh, in a lot of different ways and a lot of different angles. It, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, just, it's gotta be, it's gotta just keep that wound slightly open for the family. Yeah. The what ifs will kill you. Sure. But you can't help but go there sometimes. Oh no. So we have one more email. Yep. So the last email is K to detective uh, Moffat and Ryan Piller, which we know they were, uh, they, they testified. With a carbon copy to Brandon Boudreaux. Exactly. Um, good evening, guys. This is on December twelfth, December second, on in two thousand nineteen. Good evening, guys. I hope you enjoyed your holiday. Now that Loco and her homicidal crew have scattered like cockroaches, when a light is turned on, what's the next step? Can her car or phone be pinged? We have to find JJ. Is there anything we can do? Larry and I are struggling very hard with this. We stayed with positive thoughts for JJ since Charles's murder. Now it's diminishing by the hour. We must find him immediately. Thanks, guys. We appreciate you. Yeah, it's just hard to read that because at that point, the difference in these two emails is time has passed and the kids are gone. Yeah. So in the first one, we know the kids are still alive. In this next one, we have to find him. Hope is diminishing and, and we know. Yeah. So there was, uh, let's see, uh, there was a thing about, and, and this really didn't make a ton of sense. It's, it's, it's about Alex. It says Alex Cox, multiple creation, fourth creation exalted nine times, sibling to me two times on fourth creation, Rose is exalted, married three times on fourth creation, and is cut off some kind of companions of the fourth creation. His mission is to help Lori. So that was about Alex. I don't know what that mumbo jumbo is from like Alex Cox down to his mission is yeah, to help it's, Lori. It's some, it's a reading probably that, that Chad Daybell did. It sounds like Julie Rose stuff though. Cause remember that voicemail she left where it's like the flowers are blooming and it's just in code. Yeah. But really remember weird. he did talk about different past lives and all kind of stuff like that. So Yeah. I, I would assume this is Chad mm -hmm. did some kind of reading and shared it with Lori. Makes sense. His mission is to help Lori. So the last thing and I mean just she gonna get some she she got diabetes after reading all this stuff. But this is an email from Lori to JJ's school in Arizona. And this was sent on September the fifth, two thousand or is it no? Yeah, uh, September fifth, two thousand nineteen. But they were in they were in Idaho. But no, no, no. So no. okay, sorry, I'm all confused. Yeah. All right, so it says hi, Ashley and life friends. That's Arizona. 
Since the circumstances in our lives have changed drastically since my husband passed away last month, I've been offered a job out of state and have had to accept it. Lies. (laughs) We have had to move quickly since the job started ASAP. I'm sad to inform you that Joshua won't be returning this year. You have been so great to get him in this year and his DDD funding and scholarship have just all finally been settled. I really appreciate all you've done for JJ. I will continue to recommend life to all of our friends like I did with uh, she names a kid. I don't want to put the kid's name out there. We are doing our best to adjust to our new life. Please let me know what you need me to do to withdraw him. You can email me a withdrawal form or whatever needs to happen. Thank you again, Life Academy. We really loved our time with you, Lori Vallow. Liar. Liar BTs. So that's kind of the first dump that we got with these documents. And just um, this is pretty much everything that was dumped. There wasn't really anything that I thought wasn't of significance to talk about. So um, hopefully we get these documents in the next few days and then we really just dump it out there. That's our goal. Yeah. Not to undermine anybody, but at the same time, just, you know, we want to um, see what's in there. Just keeping you informed. That's it. So uh, we will have another episode for you at some point uh, by midweek, I think. And um, so, yeah, but um, we hope you guys have a good Sunday. Um, Dude, I'm about to go kill some... Texas Roadhouse rolls. Oh man, I'm gonna shoot up now. I'm just gonna start an <laughs> IV drip. Well, you could just bring me back some rolls and cinnamon butter. Oh my goodness, and uh, I'll be happy. Yeah, but uh, yeah, early happy birthday to your dad. Yep, uh, his birthday's coming up, and um, so yeah. Well, we will see you guys soon. Hope you have a good Sunday, and uh, take care. Good evening. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to Chumbacasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.